What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my volleyball coach reaction to Q, Season 3, Episode 4. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter for more content. I did notice that Suki did have his Hinata moment when Hinata said to Ushiwaka, I am Hinata Shoyu from the concrete. And I think it's hilarious that Suki said, I am Suki, the normal guy. I wish Suki would have fixed his goggles as he was saying that just to add an extra emphasis on that phrase. I think it's great that Haikyu is differentiating between two types of blocking, which is guest blocking and read blocking. However, I don't agree with their terminology. I prefer to use commit blocking and read or react blocking. I would even change the definition of how they define read blocking. In my opinion, read blocking is actually not waiting, it's actually seeing what's going on and making an educated guess on where the setter is going to set and where the hitter is going to hit. Sometimes setters are so deceptive that you do have to wait to see what they're going to do. But majority of the time, if you work on your blocking eye work, you can actually see where the setter is going to set based on their body language cues and tendencies, and then get just an extra quarter second head start on the block. So that's why I call re-blocking because you're still reading what's going on and then making an informed decision. Tendo is a great example of commit blocking. I don't like the word guest blocking because that makes it seem like there's no skill and you're just randomly blocking people at will. But what Tendo is exemplifying is actually commit blocking. He's still reading the situation based on multiple factors. Like he's trying to watch the setter, he's trying to watch the hitter, he's trying to keep track of tendencies. But the difference between read blocking and commit blocking is that he decides really early and he fully commits to his decision. Read blocking, you still have time to change direction. Let's say you trying to read the setter and you think they're leaning forward to set the outside hitter. So you start to lean right and then you read the hands are actually starting to extend behind the head. Then you change direction. Whereas commit blocking, once I see something, I'm fully committed and that's my job to block that person. This is probably the best fun fact of the entire Haikyuu anime. You guys know how much I keep referring to Dragon Ball Z as one of my favorite all-time animes. And to know that the same voice actor for an anime that was made 30 years ago is still in the game and playing important roles, that's mind-blowing. Shout out to all the old school DBZ fans. If you've been enjoying my videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon where you receive exclusive access to my monthly live Q&A sessions, monthly podcasts, my private blog, behind the scenes footage, and more. Now let's get this high Q party started. Ooh, starting off with Suki's signature improved blocking ability. That's frustrating, is all the soft blocks from the middle, can't get a clean kill. And we ended with a crazy dig from Nishinoya finally being able to control and then they convert it in transition. This is a great recap. Oh, for, the score was 22-22. The halo around the moon. Ooh, the moon. This means it must be Tsuki's time to rise, become the moon. Yeah, that's what we call funneling. In addition to Tsuki's recommendation to wait on the block, 
And remember earlier in episode one or two, I talked about one of the best ways to stop a bigger hitter or a, a player that jumps really high is you have to wait because they're usually gonna stay at the peak for a longer period of time. So you have to catch them on the way up because if you jump at the same time as them, you're gonna be on your way down as they're hitting. So it increases your, your blocking time a little bit better. But this is also a great strategy for blocking. A lot of times when blockers are training to block, they get frustrated when they don't get a stuff block. And even at the highest level, stuff blocks are still not as common as getting a kill. As a blocker, you have three jobs. Stuff blocking, obviously that's the, the best one, but that's only gonna happen maybe five or 10% of all blocking attempts if you're really good. The second one is soft blocking, where you get to slow down the ball. So even if you don't block the ball for a point, you either block it back on their side or you touch it so you slow it down and make it easier for the defender to pass. And the third one is to funnel the ball. So funneling means I'm taking away a particular space along the net and trying to redirect the hitter towards a defender. So if any of those three things happen as you're blocking, whether you score the point immediately or you slow it down or you funnel the ball directly to a defender, making their job easier to just dig in one area, you've done your job and you are a successful blocker. Well, I'm not sure why they would call that a combo play. mobbing <laughs> interesting analogies that is true flocks of birds do gather together to chase predators away I wonder if that's an accurate translation mobbing and this detail on the hair for both Tsuki, Suga Hinata is way better than previous episodes. Yamaguchi, I see you. <laughs> you have the OG fan there. Come on, Asahi. That was a very long approach there. What's the call? Is that in? Oh, right on the baseline. That might have been a bad call. Is this the first lead for Karasuno? And we knew that Karasuno had to really up their serving game and take more risks just to throw him out. Nice receive it. Ohira. Is that the Leon look-alike? And we have Tsuki's timing. Is he going to tip? There we go. And he forced the tip, but Daichi's there. Oh, Kageyama uh, overpass from the zombie. <laughs> I like that. Ushiwaka is keeping his team in check. Say, hey, don't celebrate too big. We still got ways to go. And now we have the man. I like how they always pan the camera from feet to head to show how big and muscular he is. Bump set from Asahi. Oh, they have to free ball. Someone should have taken a swing on that one. You can't send free balls to a good team like this when you can. Try to take swings. Probably gonna go to Ushiwaka because that's who they're gonna set at the end of the game. Oh, he's reading the dump. Oh, Tsuki with that last minute read. And now Tsuki has to focus on other people, not just Ushijima. Wow, Shiro Toizawa is up 24-23. At least did they get out of Ushijima serving? I 
think K K E is the setter. Unless I'm wrong. Oh no. Ushijima's serving again. Oh, you just gotta place the close ones. I mean Daichi's been passing so well. Come on, Tanaka. Tool the block. Yes, that's what you do against a triple block. One thing that's awesome that I just realized, even just pause framing at the right moment, even though this sequence is like a quarter second of him hitting into the triple block and then the camera view going somewhere else, they even spent the time to animate each finger differently for different blockers. And even the facial expressions of the three players. You see Tendo's getting excited, the setter and... I already forgot Leon. I'm just going to call him Leon because I think that's what his name was. Their facial expressions are different. Isn't that crazy? And why would animators spend the time to do that? Or why would a director require the animators to still do that even though you can't consciously process their facial expressions? Because I didn't see it. I didn't notice that they had facial expressions different until I paused it. So why would the director spend that time and energy on that? It's because we are able to process a lot more subconscious information than we realize. And so going back to what I talked about in season one, the reason why you want this level of detail, even if you can't consciously process it, is because it makes you feel like you're there. Even if you can't understand why it feels realistic, it's all these elements. It's the variation of the line judges. It's things that we actually see in real life. Like in real life, I don't have to look at someone to know that it's a different person, but you sense it from your peripheral. So, wow, this is such good detail. I, this, I, that's not even why I paused it. Uh, going back to what I said about Tanaka hitting high hands, this is the best thing to do when you have a triple block and let's say the set is super high, so you don't even have time to even look at the block because you're just trying to track the ball on a high set. The best place to go is just to swing hard into the hands. I've said this many times, but remember the hands are the weakest part. And usually you might get kind of a lucky misdirection on the wrist, maybe the fingers, maybe it's going to skip off. And even though Tanaka probably didn't intend to tool it at that angle, he made the best choice possible and just swung high and hard into the hands. And Tanaka is fearless. I think it's tied game. Ushijima is off the service line. 24-24. Ooh, and now we have Hinata coming in. Can he be the difference? <laughs> wow. Suki said hi to Hinata. You know he's been evolving. Yeah, that's a huge relief to be able to rotate out of Ushiwaka's serving run. And Suki, he's just got an easy serve. He should learn how to place it short. If you're not going to serve hard, make it in a difficult area. Soft block from Hinata. Ooh, some strategy from Suki. Oh man, that's why I served it easy. Man, great, great advice from Suki. He's really invested. Oh, right back at you. Let's see what Ushijima says. Is he impressed? <laughs> hey, this goes back to where setters like to go against each other. I love that Kageyama just doesn't care. Oh, compliment from Suki. <laughs> oh man, this is the most I've seen Tsuki grow in just two episodes compared to, to the entire first two seasons. Man, over the block from Leon. But let's see if they continue to... Actually, they haven't used Ushijima in the last five points. The setter's been trying to be deceptive. see what their game plan is. Mm. 
Yeah, even at a high level, even if you set your best hitter, if it's predictable, you, you decrease their chances of success. Good pass from Asahi. But Karasuna has been scoring well out of system, and Kagiyama is probably going to win the joust. Yes, he does. Oh, kick save from the zombie. And they get a free ball now. Can they convert? Let's see what's t let's see if Tendo can do a good commit block. Oh, the pump slide. And is that the free quick? No, he uses he draw uses Hinata to draw. And Tanaka one and a half blockers. Oh, that was so good. I'm so glad that the dialogue says one and a half blockers because that's what it is exactly is. And I appreciate that Tendo worked really hard after getting faked out one way. He still tried to recover block and at least get one hand there. As a setter, there's four situations, actually five. The best situation is to set your hitters with no blockers up, right? That's going to rarely happen, but just for the sake of ranking, that's like the best situation. Second best situation is half a block up. So let's say the right front blocker thinks you're going to set the, the three, like a, a shoot set to the middle, and then you set over the three and you actually set a fastball to the four. So the right front blocker gets faked out with a three and then only half a block. The third best situation is a single full block, meaning even though the middle gets faked out and goes somewhere else, that one blocker is able to fully commit and put up a single block. The fourth best situation is one and a half blockers. So you have a fully committed right front block here and only half a block. And Tendo's doing his best to try to close and the setter still did a great job. Kageyama still minimized the number of blockers, even if it's just half a block or less, but that leaves a small crack, a small window uh, for the hitter. And then the fourth, the fifth best situation is set a good set against two blockers. That's so cool that they even incorporate this level of strategy in an anime. Come on, this is a freaking cartoon. And the fact that they they don't, I think the best part about this is they don't underestimate the audience's ability to understand good quality volleyball. It's not the complexity of volleyball that makes the difference. It's their ability to communicate it well that is the game changer because they're able to communicate complex concepts like this to an audience of people that maybe have never played volleyball before. And then you also engage hardcore volleyball players like myself to be able to appreciate these strategies. So this is why this anime is attracting such a big crowd. And then the, the, the floating, floating celebrations. I love how the setters are just trying to outgame each other. Mm, I love it. Setters always trying to find ways to be better. Get as wild as you can. Maybe he's challenging. I wonder why he said that. Maybe he wants them to continue to try to be overly experimental to eventually make a mistake. Ho oh, ho, you forced the, the opponent to call a timeout. I don't know if I'm I'm enjoying this new halftime music. I like the da 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 Yamaguchi has got his jump float down. Hopefully we'll see more of him. I love how each school has a different cheer. That's pretty cool advice, right? You're not necessarily doing anything wrong. You just have to be patient. That is the key, and you, it's, as a coach, you, you don't want to overcoach situations sometimes. Because if your team is playing well, the best thing you could do is just keep going this direction and keep trusting it. Because if you overcoach it and tell them to do something different, 
it could make them worse. Ooh. That's a clean hit from Chiro Toizawa. This is a slugfest. I think it's cool that we have Tsuki's older brother in here. Is this a Suga lookalike? Eida kun. This is Suga's twin brother. Got the similar hairstyle. I wonder if he's the mom of their team too. Pinch saba. Yo, top spin. Easily handled by Asahi. Oh no, bad pass by Asahi. Daichi gets a swing out of system. Ooh, a joust between Hinata. No. And he's a backup setter. Just like Duga. Oh, right into the seam. Did they just finish the set there? Oh no, it's 27-26. Sorry, my nose has been really itchy because there's been a lot of smoke in California due to the fires and I have really bad allergies. Man, what a good serving specialist. Two serves in and tough. Forcing the best passer to be off. Oh, is that the, the quick freak? From Kageyama, let's see Ushijima's reaction. <laughs> That's a pretty ballsy move. Even that rarely happens at the international level. I love it. Lifting the sleeve, looking like a badass. Let's see if they can keep it consistent. Oh, a dig from Nishinoya. Oh, another dig from the Libero. Oh no, it's going to be going to Ishijima. Oh, crazy dig from Nishinoya. He's got he's got dialed in to Ishiju, Ushijima's rhythm. Interesting that he said he's only using 70%. Maybe he's saving it for later games to really seal the deal. Still one point behind. And Suki's game plan. You see him on the sideline just staring intently at what's going on. Ready for his chance to get on the court and make an impact. Ooh, good, good line swing. The reason why the left back player missed this serve. I think that's the libero. Yeah, that's the libero. He's wearing a different jersey. You see where his shoulders are facing. And that's crazy that they would animate to this level of detail. But I shouldn't be surprised anymore. <laughs> I should expect this. Except for Season 4. A lot of you guys were were uh, talking crap about Season 4 animation. But it's important that if I'm to the left side of the court, I need to angle my inside shoulder. So his inside shoulder is his right shoulder. But you see how his shoulders are facing away from the court. So it's really important that we always have both shoulders angled toward the center of the court. But it's much easier said than done. It's hard to do that at a fast pace. So that's a great drill you can do. Just have someone stand on the box and just keep hitting fast and make it a reaction that anytime you're digging the ball to the left of your body, I have to drop my right shoulder here. But really cool freeze frame. You can see how his right shoulder is actually turning away from the court instead of angled inward. Oh, Suki's in for the impact. Impact player, this one. Let's see what flashback he's thinking about here. Mm, this is where he just ex accepts that people are better. But... That was too long ago. I forgot what Suki said after that, but I'm sure we'll see the the fruition of that statement on the court. <laughs> he sucks at both serving and digging. Oh, let's see what Kageyama says. I mean, what do you say? Serve short? See what his advice is here. Mm. 
Yeah, he's not going for the flash. Let's see what Suki does. Oh, he slows it down. That commitment to the block. And wearing the hitters down. Ooh, you're yeah, not just fast enough to chase those down for sure. I love it. Even Coach Ukai is in there. Oh, Kageyama went for the swing. Force overpass. That's why you always want to jump and swing when you can. But can Hinata actually... Are they going to do a back row quick with Hinata? Oh, they are. Oh, jumping on the net. Oh, yeah. That was crazy. And he does avoid the net. <laughs> that was awesome. That is possible, by the way. Poland has been doing that with Leon. Where they essentially set him a back row quick. And Brazil does that with Lucas from the back row when he serves the Brazilian middle. Who even Suki was acknowledging that Hinata was the one that finished the play. And Asahi affirms him saying without that soft touch. Oh, now Ushijima's gonna, he's gonna enter that, that 100 percentile. Play the close ones. That's what Karch Karai always says. Triple blocker. Oh, right over. I've been there before when people just hit so hard and so fast you have zero reaction. Ushijima, this is a different gear here. Yeah, just physically imposing. They're like warriors, not backing down from the, the battle line. And Daichi's been passing a lot. Soft block. Easy pass from Tanaka here. Synchronized attack. Oh, who's that on the backside? Oh, Daichi getting into the killing action. I love this unrelenting play from both sides just hustle defense going for it no one's playing it safe everyone's just playing good volleyball short serve taking Leon out and we have the triumphant music loading up oh another one that was so cool let's watch that again you see us like a a boom cloud right in front of Nishinoya that was so cool just to, you feel the power with the animation Another free ball. They're probably going to set Ushijima again, but that's what I would do. Maybe set him a little faster. So Ushijima has only one blocker up. And he can crush it without that triple block. Low and inside. Is Nishinoya going to get into there or is Suki going to drop his hand? Oh, he does. Woo! Gets a stuff block. Oh my goodness. Suki got a stuff block against the best player. We got to see the reaction. What's, what are they going to do? Oh, Suki, man. Coming in with the goggles. Dropping that inside hand. You can't beat them, but you can wear them down. And you can eventually figure them out. Oh. ho Tsuki. For the win. Oh, shoot. Come on, normal guy. Say something. But it was a timely block when your team needed it. This is just a club. I love these 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 replays here. 
Does he cheer? Even Suki got excited. Oh my gosh, I got goosebumps. Look at the veins in my hand here. Ooh. No, I'm serious, man. My veins are popping out. My blood is boiling. So maybe he got a little lucky, but hey, Suki was ready to be lucky. <laughs> He's letting his teammates beat up on him. Mm. Very observant of Tsuga to recognize Yamaguchi's disagreeing facial response. Yamaguchi knows Suki because he worshipped him for five or six years. Wow, and Nishinoya is starting to recognize everyone else's contributions. Wow. And seeing how everyone contributed to Tsuki's decision or ease to scare him, or not scare him, to block him. Mm, I can't wait to break down that part. I just want to finish this last portion here so I don't miss anything. Yeah, Tsuki was definitely tuned in the entire time on, on Ushijima. Gathering data like a machine. He's always on the sideline watching. And he was giving a lot of great strategy. Oh, thumbs up from Hinata. <laughs> that was cute. A smile from Tsuki? Who is this guy? Wow. Even Hinata doesn't know what to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Still being Tsuki. Still being snarky. That was worth it. We got work to do. That's right. That's right, Tsuki. Wow. Look what happens when every player is bought in. Here are my immediate reactions to episode 4. And you guys were right. This was one of the most exciting episodes so far. I thought it was crazy enough to see Yamaguchi come in and get his ace and I just knew that Tsuki's breakthrough was coming around the corner and I didn't know it was going to come this soon. So I want to refer back to what I said about breaking down what Tsuki said about how even though Tsuki got the last block, how everyone contributed to that one final moment and that's so mature of Tsuki to understand what I call the global perspective of team volleyball. So what he was referring to earlier was that throughout the first set, they couldn't stop Ushijima. And then on the second set, they slowly started to dial in. They started to funnel Ushijima. They started to soft block him. And even though he was getting his kills, even though he was still getting some big kills here and there, it was wearing him down. And more importantly, it made the setter do something different, which caused Ushijima to do something different. Even though Ushijima was getting dug here and there it wasn't a good idea to change it up because probably 70 percent of the time even though they're able to funnel the ball to Nishinoya Ushijima is going to win that battle majority of the time you know continue to swing high earn multiple free balls but it was the patience and team coordination of Karasuno that led to that final block and that just goes to show how it is a team effort that even though Tsuki was the one that scored that final stuff block, it was everyone else's persistent non-stop defense, non-stop attack that forced the setter from Shio Toyozawa to make an, an uncharacteristic decision. And wow, that was that was pretty exciting. I'm no joke. I don't know if you guys can see my veins. You can kind of see it on my lower wrist. But yeah, my blood was like, I'm I'm hot now just seeing that. And just when you thought that the stuff block was intense enough, then you see Tsuki actually get excited in the, the, the Super Saiyan pose. That was amazing.
Another thing I appreciated about this episode was how messy the last couple points were. And that's the type of patience that's required to really win the big games. And you saw how Karasuno half the time was just trying to keep the ball in play because you know, after they set up their offense, whether it's Leon hitting or Ushijima, they, all they're trying to do is just keep the ball alive. And then hopefully in transition, they can force some errors or wear down the hitters like we talked about before. When a hitter just constantly gets dug or soft blocked, it can frustrate them to where they tend to overswing or it just tires them out, right? It tires them out to have to put 100% every single time. So kudos to Karasuno for putting in that non-stop energy and, and belief and patience. And that's, that's really realistic against what a small team has to do against a bigger, more physical team. You can't beat them at the power game. Now, it's not to say that you don't want to spike powerfully against powerful teams, but you just have to come in expecting that you need to earn your points in long rallies. And the good news about that is it's a lot easier, or I should say a lot easier. You can't train height. You can develop power, but some people are just born with it, especially if they're taller and bigger. But the one thing you can train is your endurance, your discipline, your technique, and your work ethic. And that's how you have to succeed as a smaller team. I can't wait to see what the, the third set's going to be. I'm already a little worried that Karasuno might lose and all this buildup. Uh, if I had to make a read on the situation based on the storytelling style of Haikyuu, I think Shio Toizawa might just end up winning on top in five. Uh, just to keep the story going. Because Shio Toizawa has been like the the main villain in the first three seasons they've kind of been the pinnacle so what's after them other teams other tournaments i don't know so that's just not me reading the situation that's just me trying to get into the mind of a storyteller because if they lose then that's going to give you 10 to 20 more episodes of building up for the next competition so we'll see what happens i'm trying not to get too ahead of myself or spoil myself i've just been enjoying one episode at a time and thanks again to all you amazing fans that have not spoiled any scenes. And when you do want to have your spoiler conversations, you put a warning in the comments. So I'm just so grateful for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction video. We'll see you guys in the next one.